Had enough with fish tanks, got enough fish tanks, time for bowls and jars, yeah. Alright everybody, so this is what we're going to be looking at today, this big old vase, and how to replicate it. Now, I, I want to say sorry right off the bat for the lighting. I could have filmed this in the daytime, but it just doesn't show off well. It, the, all the features and the nuances are very hidden uh, from a jar like this. One, because it's a cylinder and just the way the light refracts from daylight in this in this window seat area. But two, just because uh, of how filming it goes, I wanted you to be able to see up close and personal what we did here. Now, I want to make another note, which is that if you're trying to just do kind of a decorative jar like this one down here, where we've done the kind of standing pillars with the Iwagumi uh, rules for aquascaping. I have a whole playlist of aquascaping stuff and how to follow the rules of Iwagumi or rule of thirds or the golden ratio. There's a whole bunch of different schools of thought on what's the best way to show off uh, an aquascape, especially in different shaped containers. However, uh, this is not a fully uh, filtered, by any means, like biologically stable container. This totally relies on water changes and water refreshment, and it doesn't have the same substrate uh, system, which really acts as a long-term filter and sink for any of the nitrogen cycle byproducts that uh, can be troublesome. And also it has uh, Malaysian trumpet snails like this one here. And you can check out all the info on that in a longer video I have it's called uh, Put Making uh, Filterless Fish Bowls and Jars. Uh, but we're just going to look at the finished product of this today. So let's jump in to where we started. And the last note I wanted to make is if you don't have a filter for a little bowl or container that maybe you want to put some fry in or maybe you want to put a couple shrimp or a snail in, that would be fine. They don't produce much waste. But if you put fry in there or anything long term, uh, the water changes are key because it's not actually a cycled container. And secondly, um, you'll want an immersed plant like this papyrus relative. Uh, I think it's called Cypress uh, alternanthera. And it is a uh, it is a plant that I put the roots into the mossy area in the back that's kind of acting as a green uh, shield here, if you look at it. Um, there's a shield of moss. Well, this cutting goes back in there, and this can then uh, take a lot of the nitrates out of the water or ammonia out of the water if it does build up. And if we don't get enough surface area in that moss to create the nitrogen cycle, we can actually bypass the nitrogen cycle because plants like feeding off ammonia more. But uh, you just need to make sure you have enough plants that they're eating all the ammonia that could possibly build up as soon as it does build up. So with that said, uh, let's talk about making a more sustainable, larger uh, jar or aquarium, or rather how it was put together. If you want to know all the science behind it, check out the other video that I'll link below. And all of the sudden, it hits me. Yeah, I had that waiting in the fish room in a 20 long on a shelf. It's completely covered in beautiful moss and algae and duckweed. We'll have to wash off the duckweed. It's a little rickety. It's getting pretty old. But that will serve as a seasoned filtration point also for all the bacteria and everything. Might as well be filter floss, this moss. Awesome sauce. <laughs> all right. <laughs> New plan. I'll have to use that other piece for some other tank in the future. Premium Aqua Soil by ADA version 2. Couldn't find the version 1 original, but we're going to pour it into the bucket. And we just need enough of this to form a layer of nutrients for the plants. And then we're going to cap it off with an inch or two of sand. But it's also going to be for the wood to stick into. I like to put a little water in the bucket first so that all these little pieces of debris float. Now, this container 
isn't quite as big around as this bucket so it's pretty easy to measure how much we need uh, by just eyeballing how much is in the bucket which is handy all right wash slosh wash gonna make it shine gonna take off all the floaty dirts and stuff with more sloshing time so i'm gonna pour this out so that it drains into the garden but look at all that wood debris that's in amazonia now now we've got the black gold and what we'll do is we will do as we did with the sand and the stone and everything that came before and we will wash off extra debris debris and then we will hand scoop it out I like to get my hands in there really mix it all up kick the dust around keep it moving as much as possible and then that way when you pour it out it's suspended in the water somewhat more too sometimes you'll get these uh, light pieces of the aqua soil that will actually float to the surface too and they're just gonna do that in your tank anyhow so might as well get rid of them while you can doing this Slosh, 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 gonna make it fine. Gonna get rid of debris with circling time. It's a callback for any of you 35 or older, probably. All right, bye. We got the sand, we got the rocks, we got the soil, we got more sand up there. Layers, 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 layers. All right, so to reduce a little bit of the debris that will be floating everywhere just by nature of doing this substrate deal i like to use a cup then i'll put it in sink it let it fill like this and now it's not going to kick up dust everywhere so then we'll turn it once it's fully immersed under there and we'll s slowly rotate it so that everywhere is getting equal aqua soil and really we just need a layer of this and see how it falls down in the plant roots will then find that it'll be like a, a they'll they'll be like heat seeking roots trying to find it when we plant them so it's actually not that important to have a thick thick band of it unless you're trying to do a carpeting scape or something like that and that's not at all uh what we want to do if we're just doing some sort of uh jar or aquascape like this where uh, it, it, it's really not that crucial if we do it. Now, when I just pour in a scoop like that, check out how brown the water gets really quickly. So it definitely helps to do it scoop by scoop. Uh, I would suggest that highly uh, anytime, whether you're making a bowl or an aquascape or a j jar or a tank, you know. And uh, let's get back to it and then we'll cap it off with sand. All right, everybody, so we've got the layers in, and we've got some stone in. I don't know exactly how I want to position it, but I can monkey with it later. I kind of want the curve here to be mimicked with a rock that is the same shape right here. So something like moving this rock like that. So that it kind of, but more, maybe more of an angle, so the rock is lifted more. I don't know. I'll have to play with it a little bit. I don't even know if I should have the rocks in here. Uh, once it gets growing, I think it'll be fine and they'll be less of a concern. But it's looking pretty good. I drained down all the water that was uh, brown and diluted. The sand is not going to be a perfect, crisp, clean, white sand, uh, and that's actually okay. Uh, and what you're seeing here is it, the stick coming up almost like roots would on the ground where it bows back up in a bend. And so the, the speckled color of the sand, you still get the effect of the layer and the cap from the majority of the aqua soil, but you're actually... Um, you're actually getting kind of a natural look with the sand. Plus, we're going to have some tall plants planted, uh, especially back behind 
this main feature like off to the side back right where those rocks are so that's another reason why those rocks may not stay or may come forward um, once we get the plants in but now I need to fill it back up to about here just to keep the uh, algae on the ma on the stick uh, healthy but also we just need to see how the color of the water is looking because the last batch was uh, this brown and that's not like the end of the world or anything but we want a very clean uh, sample of the water because then there isn't as much organic matter in there and like I said you won't get the algae so that is what we're looking at that's the next step then we'll let it sit overnight and then we'll be planting it in the morning so uh, and that's really the final step other than putting fish in these poor fishies need a little bit of a trim so we're gonna cut some uh, some plants I don't know I'd love I love the way Bacopa grows out of a container immersed it needs a trim anyways but more so I'm looking at the the Rotala any although it does need uh, a lot of light and I'm also looking at some of this hardy uh, triflora uh, Nicaea triflora and also the red mayaka and just a normal mayaka too but the red mayaka is kind of pretty and also it grows like crazy so I could definitely get a nice vine of that with then some smaller um, pretty long and tall plants with what I have in here uh, they'll look nice for a little while at least I don't know how long but uh, I think that's going to be the plan is, is to try to feature a few long and tall pieces and uh, go from there all right so we talked about how you'll want to get the water running fairly clear within a few days the water's probably going to do this muddy thing where it turns kind of murky and that's totally natural especially if you have wood with tannins or leaves or anything like that or some plants that kind of melt and are adjusting you can see they've actually got some uh, dust and biofilm growing on them as well as some uh, fungi at the bottom that's totally normal you can use a little uh, turkey baster or something to pull that out if you want or you can just leave it be and if you have snails or any sort of live bears like I chose to put in these Lamia live bears these uh, Lamia tridents uh, two females and a male and then I also put in some of these long fin uh, tan minnows um, which are also known as meteor minnows or, or long fin white clouds some people call them uh, Vietnamese white clouds some people call them but in any case that's what the fish are in here um, the fish are and again pardon the lighting and the weird angle and it being nighttime but it's really the best way for you guys to see the plants in the tank and the height of the tank and where they're growing and all that uh, as well as the moss on the outside uh, with the ambient light in this window it's just there's way too many reflections in the day but uh, I think we'll have a nice splash of color growing in here we may have a little bit of melting and that's when we will be doing water changes in here but with this big old piece of wood that's established that I got from another tank and it's got the same algae that Maramo moss balls are made out of and you can see there's shrimp on it eating away and cleaning and I have not fed these fish whatsoever for two weeks they've just been eating any of the biofilm the algae and then I also put uh, scuds and other little uh, seed shrimp and cultures from an older tank you can see what is living in your tank under the microscope at different ages if you check out uh, some of my recent videos as well and there is plenty of food on old hard, uh, old hardscape. So things like rocks that are covered in moss or wood that's covered in 
uh, growth of moss and algae and stuff like that. There's all sorts of critters living in there, and it's been more than enough food for these little guys. But now, really, we just need to make sure that we uh, gravel vac uh, up some of that murky stuff so that the bio mass doesn't build up too high in this tank, uh, especially if you're starting it with fish in. And you need to make considerations about what kind of fish you're going to use because you've got a tank, essentially, where up top there's not a lot of air exchange. So you're going to need fish that are able to uh, live in low oxygenated water or that are from regions where they're in very still water and not flowing uh, hill streams or anything like that. Now, you have quite a bit of uh, room with that, especially if you pack it this full of plants, then you can play with the number of fish and things like that quite a bit. But I like to say uh, no more than about one and a half inches of fish per gallon of water um, for, for most people I think is a good starting point. The other thing I've done here is I've added, and right now they're not tucked in because I wanted you to see them, but I've added some creeping uh, jenny up here that will wrap around this, this uh, piece of wood with the moss on it and the algae on it. Right now the algae's dying where it's not submerged underwater or able to wick up the water, but if it could uh, wick up the water, you can see there's also hydrocodyl tripartite and uh, some money wart growing up it that have been twisted around it from all the way down in the substrate that have roots in the substrate. And so um, that's another way to actually help pull in the oxygen and the CO2 from your average room and really, really help with uh, the amount of nitrates that those plants can pull out because they're going to try to get all the nutrients they can without roots from the water column but you need plants that will feed from the water column that way or it doesn't work so make sure you know what plants you're using and the last note i want to say is if you live in a cool area or your house temperature changes a lot or you put them the the tank somewhere or the jar somewhere like this where the temperature could be changing like in a window Make sure that they're fish that are uh, accustomed to that, that have evolved for that. And uh, both these live bears uh, up here and the little minnows have evolved to handle that just fine. They can go down to 40 degrees, no problem, three, three degrees Celsius or even cooler. So between them and then I use Sulawesi uh, Caradina Malawa shrimp for this and I put about 10 in here. I also use three or four pregnant ones and they will serve as another food source for the fish. That way I don't need to be adding a whole lot of fish food. I can put a little bit of color enhancing fish food in here every so often just to help with the, the nutrients that they might not be getting uh, to help them keep their vibrant color and sparkle to them. And uh, the plants, the other thing is you just want to trim those plants uh, as they get long. So that's why I use the mayaka, but you could use kabamba or hornwort or floating plants, depending on the size of the top of your the opening that you have to work with. And then you just trim that, and literally as it grows, it's storing nitrogen uh, compounds in it like ammonia, nitrate, and nitrite. Uh, that it's converted a into uh, growth. So whenever you trim it, you're basically getting rid of that excess nitrogen. But that is the rundown on a vase aquarium, and I hope you dug the making of. And this is going to be entered in the Pack a Bowl contest, uh, the Depths Unknown uh, channel, or Jason, as he is formerly known. Uh, or degenerate fish keeper as he was formerly formerly known uh, has put on and uh, big shout out to him for encouraging uh, a lot of us to get creative have some fun with some funky shaped containers all right guys thanks for tuning in give this a thumbs up if it deserves it if it doesn't it doesn't <laughs> but if you enjoyed it subscribe uh, that that's always helpful and uh, regardless I hope I see you guys next time take it easy bye